What is up guys, I hope you're doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel and to the Airlag -like series. In this case, the profile that we're going to analyze is a highly demanded one, it's Marcos Alberca's profile on Instagram. Now, Marcos Alberca is a famous YouTuber, Spanish YouTuber, that creates a lot of photo related content on YouTube. He has more than 2 million subs, he's one of the greatest or the biggest channels dedicated to photography in Spanish and his Instagram, well, it has more than 1 million subscribers. So, we're going to jump into it and analyze his style. So this is Marcos Alberca's profile on Instagram, go and follow him and support him if you like his style. And you can also buy his presets if you're interested, here is the link, you can click on it on his Instagram feed. And these are basically his presets that he uses all the time if you want to support him and you want to achieve his precise style. Now remember that the purposes of these tutorials are not to replicate or to copy the style of other persons. The purposes of these tutorials are for you guys to understand how to analyze and break down certain color grading techniques and styles and how to apply them to your own work and how to go and create your own personal style in the future. So having said that, let's jump into his style. I think that light is going to die in any moment. It has a very low battery. So yeah, back to his style. So first of all, by scrolling through his profile, it's a very subject heavy profile. So lots of portraits, urban portraits, most of the cases. And his style is very contrasty. Now, how does he shoot his photographs? First of all, time of day. He shoots them in an overcast day with an even light or at golden or blue hour. These are the three times that he shoots mostly. Also, he shoots a lot of night portraits, but in this case, we're, gonna not, we're not gonna cover them because he uses a lot of LED lights with some blue or magenta or yellowish hue. Um, yeah, in, in those cases, we're not gonna cover those styles. We're just gonna concentrate on the daylight settings. Now, talking about the camera, he shoots with Canon. Now, why is it important to tell you the brand that he shoots with? Basically, because each camera or each camera brand has different color signs. Uh, what that means is that Canon may have some values or some colors in particular for red, for blue and for green. Sony may have different colors that differ from Canon and also from Nikon and from Fuji and all the other brands. Basically because each camera, each sensor is configured in some manner to replicate or render the colors that each camera company wants you to see. That's why some blues are different in Sony than in Fuji, than in Nikon, than in Canon. So, so that's the thing just to remember and just to keep in mind to achieve his color grain in particular. Now talking about lenses, he shoots wide. He shoots with a 35mm 1.4, with a 16 to 35 2.8 and also with a 50mm 2.8. Now why does he shoot so wide in portraits? So you have a good understanding of the context and surrounding of the subject. So it's not just a floating head or a floating shoulder up shot you can see where the subject is, what's happening, and tell a better story. So having said that, let's jump into uh, breaking down his style and the color grading. Okay, so let's jump into his portraits. Here's a portrait of Marcos himself. And the first thing I can notice is that he really stands out because the skin tones are very rich. They're very orangey. Now he, he's quite tan, but it's a bit exaggerated in the color grading that's done in the camera calibration and also in the HSL tabs. Now, the oranges already pop up, making him a very uh, tan-like color, but a bit exaggerated, a bit orangey for my taste. Now, another thing that we can notice is the overall exposure. Again, this one is shot in an overcast day, so the light is very even on his face and in general in the scene. But you have to choose, in particular when you shoot an overcast day, whether to expose the subject or to expose to the highlights. Now, in this case, he exposed to the subject and then the highlights they're normally blown out when you do that. So it brings down the highlights, brings down the white. So you have a lot more information in the highlights to achieve a very nice dynamic range with the power that 14-bit RAW gives us. Now, another thing that we can notice is that the blacks are real blacks. In this case, they're not faded out or anything like that. They're not crushed. Here you can see the black interface of Instagram is basically the same black that we have in his shirt. And then the shadows are dragged down just a bit. So we have a bit of loss of information in the, in the shadows and achieving that very contrasty feel. Now, talking about the coloring, besides skin tones, the greens are desaturated, dimmed down, and uh, reduced the luminance in the luminance tab in HSL. And also we have a very nice orangey tones over here, and the sky has a bit of blue tint to it. Now, this portrait is shot with an aperture of around 2.8. That's why we have some blurriness in the background, but we can still distinguish object from object. We can see over here some trees, then the road. If it were 1.4, this would be completely blown out and it would be harder for us to differentiate one object from another. So don't always shoot at 1.4 guys to achieve um, certain looks, in particular if you want to tell a better story. 
otherwise your subject is completely isolated and the background could be anywhere. You can be in your backyard or you can be in Whistler. So let's continue. So the previous portrait and this one I will consider to be around his base style that we're gonna create and we're gonna create all the other styles around this one. Where we have those crushed shadows over here, that's those blacks that are completely black and also the highlights are very thin down so we have a very flat image in the highlight row but then a very harsh and contrasty in the shadow row. So over here once again, skin tones, He's a bit too red in my case and for in my taste for this one. You can see that the red is highlighted and the oranges, that's why the red lights of the cars really pop up. Then again, this one, we don't have any tint in the shadows. It's basically black and pure black only. Then the highlights are dimmed down as well. They're not overexposed or anything like that. And the skin tones are very highlighted with those rich oranges. So that's his base style. We're gonna create a base style and then we're gonna create some further styles uh, around that one. Talking about different styles, here we can see this one. This one is shot at golden hour. We have that nice orange tint coming out from the sun. But again, the sky, well, the sky isn't completely real. The sky is a bit too yellowish. That's done in the color grading part, adding some color or some tint into the highlights. We can tell that it's done in post edition and it's not the lighting in the situation because the white in the t-shirt, the sock and the sneakers of the subject is also a bit too yellow. Here you can see, well, you can see the white over here of this little arrow and you can see the white of the cursor of the mouse and it's nothing towards, it's not yellow like the shirt over here and the light isn't hitting him directly. So this is done in post edition. So this is the golden hour preset. We're going to create this one as well. Then we scroll down. This is, uh, I would consider his base preset once again. The highlights are dimmed down, a bit overexposed and the light over here is reflecting quite nicely from this bar into his face. So it's a very nice contrast. Uh, a very nice diffuse light and we have those blacks, pure blacks and shadows really crushed down. So we have that nice contrast in the shadows. Now this is another preset that differs from the base one. This is a very teal and orange look. We really make a lot of emphasis in the oranges in his skin. They're really exaggerated, much like Benny Villeneuve's style that we already analyzed. I'll pick the, put it up here in the cards if you want to check it out or Luis class style. Again, it's also going to be up here. And then we contrast that color contrast with the blues over here that's added into the highlights and also into the shadows and midtones. So basically what we're doing with the teal and orange look is creating color contrast. If you look at the color wheel, you can see that the oranges are on one side and the opposite is the blues. So it's a color contrast, you create a natural color contrast and these two colors complement each other to make this very emphatic look. That's why it's so popular in photography. He does do some weird stuff. Like in this case, here we have this portrait of himself in a very misty day a very cold day I would consider, and then he goes and adds some purple into the highlights. Now this purple, well, in nature, you're never gonna see purple mist, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. This is completely unnatural, but it's a very stylized look that he went for. Now, purple, that's done in the color gradient as well, in the highlights, and then here we can take a glimpse at the grain that he uses. The grain is very dominant, very rough, and the size is quite big. So that's the thing that we have to remember for the effects tab in Lightroom. And scroll down a bit more. Here we have another preset that we want to replicate. This is the blue hour preset. And it's basically the base preset that we had with the blues tending towards the darkest areas, not towards the teals or anything like that. Then the bluish tint in the highlights in color grading, and then bluish tint as well in the mid-tone. That's why the dress of the model is blue as well. So it's not a very controlled style, but it's a very, uh, particular or a very niche aesthetic that he's gone for in most of his scenes but again we have the same basis with the crushed shadows the pure blacks and the orange like skin tones which are very exaggerated for my taste now in this image he went for a very soft vignette you can see that the corners are dark just to make more emphasis on the central subjects keep scrolling down and it basically repeats itself for example in this one purple tint well, purple, it's a very rare case where you can get some purple tones in the sky and normally they're going to be a bit isolated. They're not going to be all over the skyline like in this case. For example, we would, we would normally see some purple over here and then transitioning into some deep blue over here. So this is it normal. This is it done again in the color grading part. Then this one, this one I would consider it to be a bad edit, but again, uh, who am I to say it? He has more than 1 million subscribers. Over here we have this greenish yellowish tint in the highlights, which doesn't really reflect the, the light that is coming from the sun. Here we can see the light that is coming from the sun is yellow, very nice, very normal for a golden hour. 
and then we have that greenish tint in the sky which doesn't quite match but again uh, this is done in the color grading part and then we have another extreme in this one he adds i'm not going to open it because it's a real he added some greenish tint into the highlights that's not normal guys but again he's a very eccentric dude and we're going to replicate his style so let's jump into lightroom and edit his style guys just a little side note before we jump into the editing part uh, all these presets that we're going to create today are going to be added into the edit like preset pack desktop and mobile versions they're going to be linked down below if you want to check it out in that preset pack we have all the presets that we've created throughout the series including peter mckinnon alan palander pau clavero monaris Luis class all of those famous photographers that we've analyzed are in that preset pack if you want to check it out and support me so let's continue with the tutorial Okay, so let's start off with this one, this portrait of my friend Kevin in the mountain. You can see that the light is not completely hitting him directly, but uh, yeah, it is kind of an overcast day. So let's jump in to this. Now, the first thing I want to do is get the real contrast that he has right. So for that, I'm going to go all the way down to the tone curve. Now, the blacks, we're not going to move them. The blacks, if we pull them up, we can see that the blacks start to fade out. Just going to move them at that point. Then I'm going to create a point in the shadows and a point in the highlights. Now, if you don't know how the tone comb works, well, basically this diagonal line is our overexposure with this part being the blacks, then the shadows, midtones, highlights, and then the whites. So by altering these points, we can just change the overexposure of our image. So I'm just gonna pull down the shadows just to have that contrast that he has in the shadows, just like that. I'm gonna pull down a bit of the highlights just to make them a bit less harsh and pull down a bit of the whites. Now we can see that the image is quite contrasty, but we're gonna correct that further along. We just wanted to have that very nice contrast in the shadows that he has. Now, I'm sorry for all the noise. It's starting pouring outside. I hope it doesn't get too loud, but anyway, let's carry on. Now up here, remember that white balancing, exposure and contrast are the values that I don't like to touch. These are the values that will depend on each situation and we're gonna change them individually for each image. Next up, the highlights. Now the highlights, we want to bring them down so we have a lot more information in the sky. So we saw that in the first example when he was exposed and also the highlight had a lot of information. So we're gonna just take advantage of the high dynamic range that the raw file gives us by pulling down the highlights. Just gonna pull them down, yeah, something around there. Minus 30, minus 31. Then the shadow is gonna pull them up just to achieve a bit more information in the shadows. Around 40. Then the white, pull them down just a bit as well around the minus 15. Yeah, what we're doing here is just creating that nice contrast that he has and that even light in the highlight row. Then the blacks, just gonna pull them down just to retain that harsh contrast look that he has. Now this image is a bit dark, so I'm just gonna pull down the, pull up the exposure just a bit to compensate and to see what we're working with. Maybe I would just pull down a bit of the shadows just a bit more. Yeah, not too much, but something like that to have that nice contrast. Now in presence, we're not gonna move basically anything. Now texture, uh, we're talking about portraits. So texture doesn't really help with the skin tones or the skin detail. So if we add a lot of texture, we can see that all the imperfections, every single pore in his face really starts to highlight uh, every single wrinkle. No, that's not what we want. We want to keep it at zero or towards the negatives. Clarity as well, yeah, it's not quite nice. And the haze, I do like to add a negative dehaze to my portraits, but in this case for his style, we're just gonna leave it at zero. Now, vibrance and saturation, again, we're not gonna move them. We're gonna move them individually in the HSL tabs. Now, talking about HSL, we're just gonna skip it for the moment. We're gonna go all the way down to camera calibration, which is by default at the bottom setting. We can also move this up. But in this case, here in camera calibration, what we're gonna add is just a bit of that tint that he has for the skin. Now, if you don't know what camera calibration does, well, basically it alters the RGB tones that come directly from camera. So we were talking about the color science of the cameras. Now, RGB are the colors that compose the exposure and every single color that we have in a digital image. Now, red, green, and blue, if we combine them, we achieve every single color and every exposure that we have on our images. So in this case, we're gonna alter these values, which are the colors that are set by our camera manufacturer. So these will alter depending on the camera that you shot the image with. In this case, I shot it with Sony. So I'm gonna alter the values in accordance. Now the reds, I'm gonna pull them up. We can see if we pull them up, we go towards the oranges and we're affecting every single color, which is in greater or in less manner composed with the red primary. So if we pull it to the negatives, we can see that we also alter the blue tones over here. Yeah, everything is being altered if we move the slider. So I'm just gonna pull it just a bit to the plus 16. 
just to affect a bit of the skin. We can see now it's a bit more yellowish. What we're looking for is a bit more orangey. So for that, in the green primary, if we alter the green, we're basically altering, uh, in larger sense, the green and the opposite color, which is the purple. So we're gonna add a bit of purple and a bit of red to the skin tones by pulling up the greens. Gonna pull them up. If we, you can see if we go to extreme, he becomes a bit too pink. So I'm just gonna go to a plus 18, something like that. Yeah, plus 18, just like that. Click this button on off, we can see the skin just changes subtly. Now in blue primary, we can achieve that typical teal and orange look, but also we can add a bit more emphasis into the skin tones. Now, as I told you before, blue is the opposite to the oranges. Now, when we alter in camera calibration, the two colors that are gonna be altered mostly is the color that is represented there, for example, the blue, and the opposite color in the color wheel. So in this case, the opposite is the oranges. So we can see that if I move the blue primary towards the left, the oranges really start to pop up and achieving this tone. So I'm gonna go with a minus a negative 15 or something ar around those lines. And then the saturation just gonna pull it down to a minus 20, minus 19. Now with white and here we can see what we've done. Now the skin tones are getting there, a bit more orangey than the original photo, but we're not quite there yet. Now that's it for camera calibration. Now we're gonna go up once again to HSL and also every single color to achieve his precise look. So first of all, hue. What we're gonna do in hue, well, we're basically not gonna move the reds. We're not gonna move the oranges too much because oranges contain the skin tones. We're just gonna move them just a bit towards the negative. So we have a bit of orangey tones, you know, something like that. You can see now he's a bit more orangey, what we're looking for. Then the yellows, in this case, we're gonna move them. Now yellows will control, control a lot of the greens because the vivid greens are in the yellow spectrum. So we're gonna move them all the way to towards the oranges. We don't want them to be towards the emeralds or anything like that. With a minus 25, I'm quite happy. Now the greens again, again, in this case, we don't have any foliage, but we can see here the, the sweatshirt, we're gonna move it towards the negatives, towards the minus 30 or minus 40, just to make it a bit more dull. Then the aquas, I'm just gonna move it ever so slightly down. And then the blues, gonna move them to a bit more of a deep blue. Not, I don't want any aqua like this one. Just gonna move it up to a plus 15, something like that. And then purple and magenta, well, we're not gonna touch them. Yeah. Then in saturation, here in saturation, I'm just gonna desaturate a bit of the red. Basically, we want to desaturate every single color minus the oranges. Now the oranges, we're gonna pull them up. We can see how he looks like a Simpson now. So, or he has jaundice or something like that. Just gonna pull it up to a plus 18, so it's not too harsh. And now we can see that the skin tones are quite nice, more like the skin tones that he has in his portraits in particular. Now, these skin tones really work with Kevin because he has a similar type or similar color in his skin than Marcos. For me, for example, for a portrait of myself, I would desaturate a bit of the oranges. Next up, the oranges. Again, control a bit of the greens, just gonna pull them down. The greens as well, just gonna pull them down all the way down, all the way down to negative 59, negative 60. Yeah, desaturated a, a lot. Now we're gonna see this change uh, really come into play when we have some greens in the image, some trees or, or some vegetation or anything like that. Again, we're gonna desaturate the aquas just to make those blues in the sky and in the water a bit more dull and desaturate a bit of the blues as well something like that. Then we're gonna go all the way down to luminance and in luminance, we're basically just gonna add a bit more white or a bit more black into each color to make it a bit more bright or darker. So in this case, we're gonna make the skin tones pop just a bit more with a plus 10 on the oranges. And then down here, just the blues, reduce them a bit to a plus minus 25 as well as the minus 25 for the aquas, just to make them a bit more dark and a bit more moody. Now, we can see the before and after what we've done, and we're getting to his style. Now, something else is missing that he sometimes uses and he sometimes doesn't, which is the grain. We're gonna go all the way down to the effects tab down here, and we're gonna add some grain. Now, the grain, just gonna leave it a quantity around 30, 33, but it's a bit too small. So I'm just gonna amp up the size and amp up a bit of the roughness just around there. And now it's a lot more notorious and a bit more dominant. It just gives us this really organic and film-like texture to the image. And the base preset is complete. We can see the before and after how we have now that nice contrast, that, that desaturation in basically all the image and the skin tones tend towards those orangey vibrant that he has. Also, the highlight roll has been dimmed down 
that's what we were looking for. Now I'm gonna save this preset and then we're gonna create further presets or further styles that he has based around this one. So for saving it, we're gonna go to the preset panel over here at the left, click the plus sign and hit create preset. Remember that white balancing, exposure and contrast, we want to unmark them so they're not saved in this image. Those are the values that could be at zero in every single image that we edit and we're gonna compensate them. So it's gonna hit create. And first of all, let's see how this preset performs in other images. So here we have another image of Kevin. I really have to find a new subject to take photographs. Um, Kevin is the one around, so eh, I've taken a lot of portraits of my friend. So over here, I've already created the base preset. So I'm just gonna select it. And with Y on our keyboard, we can see what we've done. And the change is very notorious. We can see that desaturation in the greens in the background, the blues as well in the jeans and also in the shirt and overall lighting has disappeared and we have those orangey skin tones that we were looking for with that nice contrast in the shadow row over here. Okay, so next up we have this strange portrait of myself doing uh, some weird ass face. So just gonna apply the preset once again, before and after, you can see that nice contrast. Now this is what I was talking guys, this yellowish or orangey skin like palette that we've added into skin tones doesn't really work with my skin. So what I want to do in this case is just isolate my face for example, I'm, select, I'm gonna select the auto masking tool for subject. Now, I've already made a complete tutorial about the new auto masking features within Lightroom. I'll link it up here in the cards if you wanna check it out, where will I go into detail into what this tool does. Basically, here we're selecting myself. I'm gonna subtract with the brush tool everything but myself, of course. Yeah, and once I've selected myself, what I'm gonna do is just pull down a bit of the saturation yeah, to make my skin tones a bit more normal but remaining with the contrast that he has and the saturation. So this is basically how you can alter his preset to other types of skin tones. Okay, so here we have this urban scene over here, this back portrait. So let's apply the preset, the base preset over here. With one key, we can see what we've done and it's looking quite nice. We can see those oranges really start to pop up in the tree over here and in the hood, in the little bun hat over here. And yeah, it's looking quite nice, but still we can't see her face, so it's not a real test of the preset. Let's see the preset, base preset. Let's apply it then. Let's bring up the exposure because we're not seeing anything. Now it looks quite normal, but there are some changes. For example, we have that loss of information in the shadows, that hard contrasty blacks, and then that nice roll off in the highlights. Okay, let's move on to create a similar style to his blue hour preset. Okay, so here we have this image of myself. Um, it's not the best picture I've ever seen, but again, just for purposes of the example, let's create the blue preset in here. So I'm gonna select the base preset, just gonna apply it. And really we can see how the highlights are dimmed down and we have those orangey skin tones really pop up and the blue from the sea has really been darkened and it's looking quite nice. Now what I want to do to create this sub preset is going to go all the way down to color grading and over here we can just basically add a tint to the shadows, to the midtones or to the highlights. So starting off with the highlights, I'm going to click this button on here. We can basically just enter the precise values over here or we can just move around the sliders. So I'm just going to add a blue tint to the sky just to make that blue hour around here, around the cobalt. Yeah, immediately you can see the change. Yeah. And then we're not going to add it to the shadows because his blacks and shadows are normally just black. They don't have any tint. We're going to add another blue to the midtones over here. So just going to add a bit of blue. Yeah, just like that. Maybe bring down a bit of the luminance. And yeah, this is a little variation on the base preset that we've read. This one we can apply it to sunsets, to blue hour in particular, to make really emphatic blue tones or very emphatic blue lighting. So I'm just gonna save this preset once again, just gonna click on the plus sign over here, create preset and save it. And then I'm gonna create another one for golden hour. Remember that for golden hour, he just added some yellowish tones into the highlights. So in this case, we have this portrait, just gonna apply the base preset once again, just alter a bit of the exposure because this one is underexposed. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of yellowish tint into the highlights over here yellowish or orangey tint just like that and maybe into the midtones just as well just a bit uh, not too much then in this case this image is a bit overexposed in the highlights so you could pull down the white pull down a bit of the exposure and it's looking quite nice i'm going to copy these settings and apply them to another scenario so here we have so here we have this image this one is in the sunset it was more like blue hour so just going to paste the preset over here just add a bit more exposure and we can see that it's a lot more yellow which is giving this vibe of golden hour. 
you can see the same preset we have already saved it just gonna apply it all the way to this one base preset blue hour and then golden hour which is got which gives us this really nice yellowish vibe very sunset -y vibe into our image so by having this base preset you can now go ahead and create those eccentric styles that he has very exotic for example in this one maybe i want to add that purple tint that he has in some of his landscapes so just gonna add some purple tint or magenta over here into the sky and really make it pop yeah it's not i'm not very fond of this style but yeah you can make it you can make it work or also that greenish tint that he sometimes adds over here yeah something like that yeah for me it's not a very aesthetic uh, scene but well that's the way he likes to do it so this is a very exotic style nothing for me not of my taste but again this is marcos alberca's style not tony fuentes and remember that the presets that we've just created the base preset the golden and the blue preset are all going to be added into the edlag preset pack which will be linked down below in case you want to support me also there's my shop you can find all the presets that i use every single day for urban scenes for vintage moody or the film look style other than that guys if you did like the video can you please give it a like it actually makes a difference consider subscribing Share it with a friend if you think they might find it helpful. I'm Tony Fuentes. I hope you're doing well. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.